Hello everyone, been quite some time since Photomaker was released and now there are a lot of updates to the Photomaker custom build. In today's video, I will show you how you can install the latest version. I will also show you a workflow that you can use in order to generate images using Photomaker. Let's get started. You will require the Comfy UI Manager in order to install Photomaker. Click on it, then Go into custom nodes here. At the top, there is an input search keyword. Type in photo maker and click on search. Now, be sure when you are installing, you install the version that is from Shimizu and not the Zoo 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 implementation. Basically, the Shimizu version is the native company Y implementation, whereas the Zoo 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 implementation is just a wrapper around the diffusers. So make sure that you have the ID 477 Shimizu and then go all the way to the right side, click on install. You should see installing Comfy UI Photomaker Plus on the bottom. Once it's completed, you will see a restart button. Click on the restart button. All right, so once it's completed and you have your web browser restarted, click on the manager once again, then go into install models. At the top, type in Photomaker and make sure that you are getting the Photomaker-v1.bin. It's an SDXL model. So you will need to use SDXL checkpoints together with Photomaker. Click on install. It will download the model. It may take some time. Once it's completed, click on the close button. All right, so right click on an empty space. Click Go into Add Node, then you should see Photomaker. Inside, you will see two nodes, but this is a little bit deceiving because we have more nodes for Photomaker. They are just in strange areas. So I recommend just double clicking and searching for the nodes once you know the node name. For now, I will show you where to get it. So yes, in the IP adapter category, there's also a prepared images for clip vision from path. This is using the implementation by Matteo from the IP adapter custom nodes. Add the Photomaker Encode Plus custom node, and this is how it looks. If you downloaded the old version, you may see additional section, but for this version, we are going to work with a clip input, the Photomaker model, and then an image. Then we have the text field or the prop. There's a trigger word that's already inserted for you and this node will output a conditioning. So the idea is we are going to have the model. The model will go into the Photomaker Encode Plus. The conditioning will go into the case sampler. And this will just replace your positive. Oh, however, we have to keep in mind that this is SDXL. So you will need an SDXL workbook and you can basically just put this node into the SDXL, replacing that positive one. Next, just to, to take a look, we can also check the apply automatically style. And this is going to add some tokens to your positive prompt. Basically just add additional words to your prompt based on the style that you've selected. If you have a node that's already adding a styles to your prompt, you can use that as well. And the way it works is that we need to pass in a positive text, negative text, and then out will come a positive and negative text. This node will give out text or strings. So do not confuse the positive and negative as like a positive conditioning or negative conditioning. And uh, the last node that we can select from the right click menu is on the IP adapter section, the prepare images or clip vision from path. So it allows to pass a path and you can have a path like this. So you're basically going to input the path to a folder containing images of your character. So you can get that from online. You can generate it using a stable diffusion. Basically, you just need to have a folder containing the face portrait of the character that you want to use as the input image. And the node itself, it gives you different ways where you can crop it. So we have a crop position. Right now it's center. 
but it can be changed to top, bottom, left, right, depending on your image. Now, next, I said earlier that ideally you should use an SDXL workflow. However, just to show you, you can actually use the basic workflow, although the quality of the image is variable. So in here, in the bottom section, I have a very basic text to image workflow and the photomaker encode plus here is just going to replace the positive prompt here. So here we go. I just deleted the clip text encode or positive prompt. Now I have the photomaker encode plus replacing it. So from my low checkpoint, the clip, the clip will go into the photomaker encode plus already have my load image and my photomaker model. This conditioning will go in as positive conditioning. The negative one can stay as the same and goes into the case sampler. Well, now I'm just going to use the load image, just load one image, but you can also use the prepare images for clip vision from path in order to load multiple images. Okay, so I have everything connected here and I just want to show you what's going to happen if your load checkpoint, you have an SD 1.5 checkpoint but uh, the photo maker is an sd excel checkpoint if i click on q prop here and see q prop one it's loading the photo maker loader and see here the border it goes into the encode and it will basically tell us that we have a mismatch shape and if you've been using sd excel you can kind of guess what's happening and see the shape here for 1096. That's basically telling us that we need the SDXL model. So just change it to an SDXL model and then click on load. Q probably can see the key sample going and you can see that the result is not great. And that is because the latent image is still 512 by 512. So I'm going to change it to 1024 by 1024. You can also use any other resolution that's compatible with SDXL. All right, it's completed and this is the new image. Now, once again, I'm going to say that it's it's okay. It's not a great image. Okay, next for SDXL workflow, we can simply go to the Comfy UI GitHub repository. We'll have the link somewhere above me. Then you scroll down where you see Comfy UI examples. Click on it, it will open the page for all the Comfy UI examples, then look for SDXL, click on it, and we'll open up giving you an SDXL example. We can drag this image, so just drag it and drop it inside of Comfy UI. And Comfy UI, it should load up. Now, if you have the model, the checkpoint already downloaded, the base SDXL and the refiner model, you can simply change this, replace this one with the Photomaker Encode Plus node. So here we have the positive and negative. So double click on an empty space, search for Photomaker, and make sure to select the Photomaker Encode Plus node, not the normal one that says Photomaker Encode. Now, since we have a primitive text box here that is holding the positive text, we can take this and pass it over to this text box. In order to do that, we'll have to change the input box. You can right click and change it to an input. So select convert text to input. And you will see that we have X here. We can take the string and pass it over to the text. Okay, so just move it in place, connect the string to the text. The conditioning will go into the key sampler as positive. For the refiner section, you can leave the click text encode the same or if you want to give it a try, you can also duplicate the Photomaker encode node and then do the same for the second key sample. For this example, I'm going to keep it simple and use only one Photomaker encode plus node. Next, just fill in the empty node. So grab the image, drag out and look for a load image node. I'm going to use this one for this example. Then go drag Photomaker, get the Photomaker loader, get the model for the clip. You'll need to get the clip from the SDXL base model at the top. Drag the clip, connect it, and that's about it. Change the positive, negative, and then click on Q prompt. And um, here's an example of what I've got. Now I had to do a regeneration in order to get a good image. So it's 
probably going to depend on the seed number as well as the different styles that you're using. All right, so in order to add the style, I would take the text from grab it, move it a little bit, then double click and type in style. You should have apply photomaker style. Then take the positive from your primitive node, pass it over to the photomaker style node. Take the negative, pass it over as well into the negative field. Now this negative will need to go into the clip text encode for the negative. So drag it into the text for the negative one, should be red. And then the positive will go into the photomaker encode plus node. Yep. Now keep in mind we're not using this positive for the first key sampler. So you can disable it by pressing control M. That's going to mute it. Or you can also remove it. I'm going to keep it just in case I will use it later. Okay, and then click on Q prop. Okay, next I'm going to show you how you can get some more workflows. So at the bottom here, you can see that I have a search bar. In my previous video, I show how you can add this magnifying search to your Comfy UI. Click on it, it says search for workflows, and I can type in Photomaker, press enter. It will search for a couple of workflows that uses Photomaker, and I can simply use workflow. It will download the workflow and load the workflow directly here. And if you study it, you can see that it's using the same principle. We have a checkpoint. It's an SDXL checkpoint. In this case, this particular one. It goes into the prompt. And the prompt, you can see we have a positive. We have the trigger word. And this particular workflow is using the SDXL prompt styler. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you can use any styler, prompt styler that you have, as long as it's compatible with SDXL. And scrolling all the way, we can see the basic SDXL. And this is the important part. We have the clip text encode SDXL version. And you can see the number here, 4096. If you remember, I showed you an error earlier when I was using SD115. That's basically, it's we have a shape mismatch. Now, this particular workflow also has a face section. This one is using the load retina face, and it's going to do a B-box and crop it based on uh, the face. So it can automatically crop the image. You can use any any L, anything else to process your input image, even a basic crop load is going to work fine. Then we have the Photomaker section. And one thing to note here is that this one is using the old Photomaker encode new. You can swap this or the new one by adding it, right click, choose convert text to input, and then everything else will be exactly the same. So you can just drag all the inputs from this old version into the new version, like so. And the conditioning, it goes into the key sampler. So you can pass that over this new no longer required. You can just replace it and save this version for later use. And goes, it has a refine up section as well. If you are using a community train model, you can go from the basic SDXL section directly to a VAD code and then get your image at the top. By the way, this section is to input your initial image. You can replace this with the prepare images for clip vision from path by giving it a path like so and just point it to where you have your your images. If you have the Comfy UI inspired pack, there is one that's called load image batch from DIO, which is basically directory. And this one will allow you to again load images in batch, can put in the directory here. But you can select the start image by using the index here. And you can also put a cap. Let's say you have four images of a woman. The next four image is of a man. And you want the woman's part. Then you can start with the index zero. And you can end after. Or this will get you image one, two, three, four. And we'll stop there. Okay, so that was it. Hopefully it was helpful to some of you to upgrade to the latest Photomaker custom node or maybe if you have not installed the custom node previously you are able to get it and I've showed a couple of workflows that you can use with it as always experiment with it try out and see which workflow works best for you 
to that particular image. You may have to give multiple input image. In that case, use any node that allows you to load multiple images at once. I showed you two. The one that comes built in with Automator, prepare images for clip vision. And then the other one is from the Inspire Pack. Okay, so thank you for watching. As always, thank you for your support. I will see you in the next one.